So here's a Sony XZ Premium. Uh, this is gonna be the first 835 phone, right? The first that, announced? Correct, this is the first announced phone to have Snapdragon 835. Um, of course, it's an incredible phone with a beautiful screen and an amazing design. And one of the other important features about it is that it supports gigabit LTE. So download speeds up to one gigabit per second over cellular. And, and this is a live demo, actually, that we have uh, of the speed going over the phone. So reach a speed of around 979 okay. megabits per second. So what, how do you do this demo? Because there's some cables? Correct. You're getting directly to the antennas? That's exactly. Those are actually the antenna lines because we're not allowed to transmit over the air here in Barcelona, so we actually have it wired up to um, to the LTE tower, essentially, that we have in the back, so. You're not allowed to transmit because only the carriers. Uh, Correct, the we don't have telcos. license. Correct, we don't have license to transmit. Here. All right, yeah. and this is uh, on the, the, what is the gigabit LTE? Is it a new spectrum or is it just the same spectrum, better used? It's basic, it's actually the best way to think about it is the same spectrum, better used. So, um, just a few years ago, um, on three LTE carriers with carrier aggregation, where you're combining three uh, carriers together, we were only able to get peak speed of 450 megabits per second. And now on that exact same amount of spectrum, we're getting up to a gigabit per second. And the way we're doing that is we're using more advanced techniques like using more antennas. So the, the Sony Xperia XZ Premium has four LTE antennas instead of just two, and that allows it to receive data from four antennas on the tower simultaneously, which d helps double the throughput. One of the questions that we always get is, okay, that's the peak speed, but what are the real world speeds that I can expect? And so to answer that question, we embarked on this pretty massive network simulation. So this is actually Chicago. Um, you went around with this uh, phone there? So what we do is we actually capture the RF environment in the city, and then we bring that data back and we put it into a simulator, a very sophisticated simulator that can predict the expected performance for a mix of devices um, and, and traffic types. So what we can do is, as you see, there's different dots of different colors, which represents that some people have very basic LTE devices, some have more advanced LTE devices, so on and so forth, until 7% of people have gigabit LTE devices in this network. So what we can do is we can select a cell sector, and we can actually compare the performance of the different devices in that sector. So let's say you're doing, you know, you're downloading a file from the cloud. What kind of speed can you expect? So we'll compare median users, and we'll compare CAT6. So that's kind of the common LTE capability of a lot of devices and networks today versus CAT16, which is gigabit LTE. Okay, so what this is saying is that the median CAT16 user is getting around 93 megabits per second compared to the median CAT6 user that's getting 50 megabits per second. So again, it's not so much about the peak rate, but it's about the improvement, because there's some thinking out there that some of these advancements that happen in the phones don't actually yield real benefits in the real world, but that's not true. Even though you're not getting the peak speed, you're still getting faster average speeds um, with, with these devices. Now what happens in the network if I change the mix of devices, so the majority of devices are the most more advanced ones, watch what's gonna happen to the throughputs as I make the change. So the speeds actually went up for both of them. And the reason is the gigabit LTE devices use the network much more efficiently, and so the network can assign them fewer resources to get the speeds they need, which opens up the capacity of the network for other users to get even faster speeds. So really everyone wins with, with gigabit LTE. How can we get uh, the full throughput? The full throughput, well let me show you. So this is for the median user. If we go to the 90th percentile user, you're talking about over 200 megabits per second. What, is that, what does that mean, what you just did? So what I mean is 50th percentile, that's kind of the average signal conditions. 90th percentile is somebody who's close to the tower. Oh yeah. And so when you're closer to the tower, you have a stronger, cleaner signal, which gives you higher throughput. Can we get even higher? Can we get to 900? So actually, I don't think we can get to 900, but if I were to factor, give me a second. Okay, you get really good geometry. Okay, so that's about... <laughs> so you're going to burst up to a crazy high speed. Correct. We're talking about uh, fiber in your pocket, right? That's exactly right. That's, that's the message. It says right there, fiber optic cable download speeds, but without the cable. And uh, do, you, do the telcos need to install a lot of new base stations for this to work? Like Not necessarily install new base stations, but they, if they haven't done so already, they need to upgrade their antennas. Fortunately, 
uh, a lot of operators had the foresight to implement four antennas in the towers. So now, with the devices being capable of having four antennas as well, it's actually a software upgrade. Is it hard for the device maker to fit four antennas? Absolutely. It's a formidable engineering challenge. It's hard, right? It's very, very so hard. And Sony was the first device to do it last year with our last generation Snapdragon 820. And uh, Samsung did that afterwards with the Galaxy S7 as well. So there were two smartphones last year that had 4x4 MIMO. Uh, but this year, you know, more OEMs are figuring it out. Sony, of course, again, is the first year to show it with 4x4 MIMO. But there will be other premium tier devices this year that use 4x4 MIMO to get to gigabit speeds with the Snapdragon 835. Uh, the device, uh, in the designers of these devices, they love these challenges, right? They have yes. to put more stuff in there. Absolutely. And you provide the technology that can make it work. Make it make it work altogether. Yeah, but it's, it's a formidable engineering challenge. But they were able to overcome it, which is a great and achievement. And if I'm uh, downloading uh, my uh, uh, torrents yes. at this speed, is it going to use the battery much faster than an older phone? It's actually the opposite, which may sound a little bit counterintuitive. So what happens is you're using higher power, but you're doing so for a shorter period of time because you're finishing your downloads faster. So net-net, it, it turns out that typically the faster you go, the lower the power consumption is. Are there going to be new uh, companies offering broadband to the home through this gigabit LTE network? Uh, I believe that it at least opens up the possibility for, for more people to do so. We remain fo focused, of course, on the mobile application and the smartphone. If people would do that, evolve. is it going to interfere with uh, mobiles? People no, I mean, it would, you'd be using exactly the same type of network, you know, similar modems, uh, for example, from Qualcomm, so it should operate fundamentally the same way. I think what's exciting, for example, in the United States, the, in the United States is the move towards uh, unlimited uh, data plans, which is really encouraging people to rethink about how they use their devices and really open up new use, uh, use cases that people probably would not have considered before with limited uh, data plans. Do you get more bandwidth in a densely populated area or not so densely or medium or? So that's interesting. It's it's a shared resource. So the more people that you have sharing the resource, you know, the slower the speeds would be. But what the operators typically do is in a dense area with a lot of people, they end up installing more cell towers and more sectors in order to um, make sure that everybody have enough has enough capacity. You can make smaller areas. Correct, correct. So what you do is that you make the cells smaller and you cram them closer together. So you know if you're covering a large area, you cover a certain number of people. If you cover a smaller area, by definition, you're covering a smaller number of people sharing the same resource. And this one combines licensed and unlicensed? This particular demo does not. It's only licensed spectrum. But we have another demo over there that does actually combine licensed and unlicensed and still get to gigabit speed. So, yeah. All right. Let's, let's let's go over there. Okay, so let's check good. it out. Okay, That's thanks good. a lot. So you can talk about that too. Yeah, sure. All right. Well, actually, they can, they can. How about they can talk about it because there's nobody else at the yeah. at the station there. So maybe with Shivani. Let's jump in. Is it right here? Yeah. Right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we get in here. That was for the the 4K 60 frames per second. Correct. VR, right? Correct. That's right. Uh, so why is it related to that? So unlicensed and licensed mixed up. Yeah. So we just wanted to show the benefits of combining licensed and unlicensed spectrum because. Um, in order to get to gigabit speed, you need about 60 megahertz of spectrum at least. And not a lot of operators around the world have you know, 60 megahertz of spectrum at their disposal to get to, to gigabit speed. And so uh, what we did was invent this technology called License Assisted Access so that you can send LTE signals over unlicensed spectrum, which is freely available for anyone to use. So what we have here is a, a gigabit LTE network with one license connection and three unlicensed connections, so 4x carrier aggregation total. And we have all of these devices here sharing the same gigabit LTE connection, streaming a very high, very high quality 4K 60 frame per second videos um, over the shared pipe. So using hundreds and hundreds of megabits per second. So what is this unlicensed spectrum? Is it is not Wi-Fi? Is it on the Wi-Fi? Is it on five gigahertz or somewhere else? So is it's it five gigahertz? gigahertz. It's on five gigahertz. So it's the same spectrum band that Wi-Fi as well as other technologies use, and it's freely available for anyone to use. But it's not like a, it's not like a short range, or is it? It is short range. Ah, it's only like Wi-Fi. Correct. So it, the LTU or LAA small cell actually has is capped at the same power output as a Wi-Fi hotspot. 
Um, there will be, have slightly better range just because LTE is slightly more efficient than Wi-Fi in some ways, uh, but it has the same power output limitation. And so this is actually a small cell technology. So the operators you know, can go into a, a very highly congested area, for example, an airport or a mall or a university campus or a convention center. Exactly, right? And insert, you know, put the LAA small cells to boost the capacity of the network in that specific area. Uh, so five gigahertz is going to be a big deal in the future, but this Absolutely. is not Wi-Fi. It's not Wi-Fi. It's actually LTE. It's it's actually exactly what it is. It's LTE carrier aggregation, and you just happen to be sending the LTE signal over the five gigahertz spectrum. And do you use the 700 old TV space? Do you use that kind of spectrum too? Or so, what's... I mean, we support, essentially our modems support all of the latest bands that have been made available and approved uh, by the 3GPP, the organization that uh, controls the LTE specification. So if there's more bands, you just add them, you know how to do it. Correct, yes. All right. Absolutely. Cool.